I'm going to say something that's going to get me in trouble. There's some fine, wonderful uh, leaders in Europe. But I don't think Europe has reached the point of political maturation where they are able to solve their problems without a bit of an outside catalyst, the United States. We don't solve the problems for Europe, but we are a European power. Had, for example, we disengaged completely in Bosnia, said that's a European problem as President Bush said it was, this would never be resolved. The thing, sir, you said you hate to see abuse of power. Is it fair to say that Americans sometimes are tending to abuse the power being the only one remaining? Yes, yes they are, but there, there are two, if I can make an analogy. There are two ways in which power is abused. We used to, I used to be taught by the nuns who would say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But it matters whether you start out with good intentions or bad intentions. I challenge anyone in Europe or the Balkans to name me any country that's willing to put their young women and young men on the line, their blood on the line, for no territorial gain, no economic gain, no political gain. None. What the hell do we, what politically, economically, or in terms of territory, do we gain in, 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 in the Balkans? We, in fact, for example, in the war in Kosovo, we did say, all right, this is it. We're going to bomb this site. Now, let's get this straight. The reason we did is no one would make a decision. There was chaos. Chirac was sitting back and saying, well, this target we can't do. And someone, someone would say, well, this target we can't do. And, it, and there was paralysis. So in a sense, we, we exercised our power as the largest, most powerful nation in the world militarily. But it didn't start off that way. Had we sat there and said, all right, we're gonna go, let's, we have a game plan. 